you know, it, it's hard for me to really know um, if, if I did feel anger, who I would project that on. You know, I, it's, it's almost like an intellectual process that, you know, we've identified an enemy and we're taking actions against that. We, we have a good idea of who the culprits were, but, you know, um, I, I have a tough time, you know, feeling anger, you know, come up towards that, those people or, um, you know, I, I feel more pity and um, sadness than anything else. I think there are many people who maybe don't understand what New York is like and what it's like afterwards, but I think librarians do. You know, I mean, there isn't a librarian. I, I speak to people all over, from all over the country all the time in the course of my work, and everyone asks, you know, are you near there? How are you? You know, it's a very caring kind of thing, and that, that was really a nice thing. I did put out a request for donations, and I will say the library community really responded very well. Um, the headquarters librarian, Mr. Hoyt Galloway, was very good about sending us, say, their older materials when they got in, say, a new wards business. They sent me the old one. So we were able to come up with a small collection of core material quite quickly. Other libraries, academic libraries, public libraries, other agency libraries were able to donate a lot of the legal materials um, so that we have a lot of the older materials. And of course, West, if we can ever get it into the building, has uh, sent us what we were subscribing to uh, when we were in the World Trade Center. So we are sort of up and running. We've still got a long way to go. As I said, we're working out of boxes yet. I think I can pretty much generalize that every profit-making publisher has replenished everything we had in our collection free of charge. I cannot begin to tell you what cooperation and assistance everybody was, was offering um, because business had to go on, clients had to be served, and uh, office or no office, library or no library, you still had to get the work done. And so we were dealing with not only emotional stress, physical stress, lack of collection, lack of facility, but we had to provide the information. And uh, we're very grateful and we're very thankful to the library community, um, a great bunch of people. A lot of the contracts that we had and the vendors we had, they gave us everything that we didn't even have and but may have needed. Uh, so they really uh, opened up their arms and their, their doors uh, to us. And uh, all, the diff all the libraries called up to, to locate us and asked to help in any way they could. Uh, um, SLA members especially all over the Special Libraries Association members all over the country were calling. Um, I'm the president of the New York chapter of uh, Special Libraries Association and also the chair-elect of business and finance for the association. So I got probably an extreme amount of calls um, with people wanting to help. Um, it was just good to hear from people. We came back um, periodically during um, the next four months. Um, we officially came back to our building in the second week in January. Um, but periodically I would go down to our library and um, retrieve material. Um, our staff basically functioned for about four months out of, out of the main campus library. We had a small office, four of us crowded into a small office there and that was difficult to try and maintain some level of service to the clients that students and, and insurance industry clients that we served in lower Manhattan, but um, we, we were able to do that. For a while before September 11th, we were seeing um, less students showing up in the library because we now offer remote access and they can get in from their home and their office, their class and so on. But after September 11th, suddenly we saw a resurgence of student population. It was almost like they wanted to 
be in a place. They wanted to see a librarian. They wanted to have a real person to respond to. And so that sort of interaction has recurred. And I think that's what a lot of people are seeing. You know, there's this need to, to connect. And I think they're connecting with the library. I guess another thing that has changed is that a very positive, positive thing happened. People really started um, getting together and feeling closer. And you realize how important your family is, how important friends are, how important your colleagues are, the people you work with. You're with these people eight, 10 hours a day. And an experience like this really brings you much closer and you really value people other people and the help that they and support they give to one another. I was really glad to be at a place where people, I mean my job, where people care about one another. It was so good to see people um, whether the day that we went back but also in that interim period where we were scattered we would often come together for meetings and so on. It was so great to see people. Um, Chris Stone, the director, had people over to his house the day after um, people who lived in Brooklyn, you know, who could make it there. And it, just to not feel alone and to feel supported was really important. We have mixed feelings, I think, about what goes on outside our building because th it's where everybody needs to come to see, to experience September 11th, to be at Ground Zero. And so we're in the middle of, of that. And it's, I understand, and I think we all understand, that people need to come to see it. We needed to right after many of us had to just witness what had happened even before, way before we went back into the building. So we understand that. I understand that. People need to remember, and I think people should go down to the site and pay their respects. Um, it's a difficult thing to do, but if people who lost family members can do it, I think other people can. And um, um, I just think people should um, just remember. Like sports, I always thought it was such a big deal. I had jet season tickets, and afterwards, I missed like a couple games. I gave my tickets away to other people. My wife and I went to see uh, Broadway shows on Sundays rather than uh, going to the football game, which uh, I hope my, none of my friends that I grew up with in the Bronx uh, hear about that, so they'll, they'll, they'll disown me. Uh, but a lot of things like that really changed in, in uh, perspective. Uh, changed? I think my professional life and my personal life and who I am sort of I think come together in terms of one of the reasons why I wanted to be a librarian is to help people and whether that's you know there's lots of ways to do that being a librarian but that's really um, what I love to do and um, after the events of September 11th, um, it's just become so crystal clear to me that that's what people need to do. People need to help each other, you know, regardless of, you know, anything, religion, race, creed. And that may sound very superficial, but it's not how I feel. I really, really mean it. I guess if this hadn't happened, um you know, there's a lot of things um, that I think that I wouldn't and other people um, wouldn't have been aware of. So out of, um, so out of something that's so horrific and negative, uh, there are positive, a lot of positives. The most positive thing that sticks in my mind concerning September 11th is the camaraderie that developed in New York, um, how people helped each other, total strangers. Um, that to me said that there's hope for humanity. 
I remember that right afterwards. I remember thinking that I should have looked. As I, when I said that, when the person said that the, tower, the first tower was coming down, I didn't want to see it. I remember thinking I, later, I, if I had looked, maybe I, could be, I would be coping better with it now. But I think, on reflection, what I, I wanted to go back to that time. But it's not that I wanted to go back to that time so I could see it. I wanted to go back to a time when, it, when this didn't happen.